and we're back. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, the peas part two. I'm not always kind of uh, on top of my game with describing what I'm doing, uh, but yeah, alternative indie peas part two. I don't know if I said at the beginning of the last video that it was peas part one. I just jumped in there, uh, but it's been a long day. And I do want to get these out there. I was going to just start slowing down a little bit. So I wanted to split these up and not try and get through all of them in one video. So uh, we're up to Pixies. Uh, now again, this is a, a, well, late 80s band, but, you know, prominent from the late 80s to early 90s. Um, this is Surfer Rosa. Again, we've got some nudity on the cover, so be, be okay with that, I guess. It's too late now. Trigger warning. Um... This is probably most uh, well known for Where Is My Mind. Um, that's sort of like a breakout hit for them, I guess. And if you've seen Fight Club, you know the context of where that track is used. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen Fight Club. Uh, so Where Is My Mind is a standout track. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's just noisy rock. It's kind of, my wife said it's like couch on the lawn music, like a bunch of Back in the back in the eighties, nineties, it's like a a bunch of flatmates who just sort of live in semi squalor. It's kind of that sort of rock. It's kind of slacker, slacker rock. Uh, not really my thing these days. I, I mean, I do like Where Is My Mind, and that that is sort of uh, unfortunate because I try not to have albums where it's just one track that I'm really into. There are a couple of other good songs on here. Uh, but again, it's, it's noisy, it's um, sort of rebellious alt-rock, you know, it's the sort of thing where it's all in your face, and I've already kind of panned Nirvana as not really being my thing, and in some respects, I feel the same way about the Pixies, they're sort of, ooh, I would say Nirvana is overrated, and maybe the Pixies are too, you know, <laughs> um, and yet I have two of them, so this is probably their... Um, what would be considered their best album uh, in terms of just overall a solid album. Oh, and with the Where Is My Mind and Fight Club, I was going to say, read the book as well. Uh, I mean, it would be hard to read the book without thinking, if you've seen the movie already, thinking of Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden, but the book itself is well worth reading. Uh, I just thought I should do a shout out for books as well, just go old school. Um, but the movie's pretty good, and yeah, that... If you've seen it or you haven't, go and look at it and you'll hear the Pixies played at a very sort of crucial moment in that film. Now the, the hits on here, Here Comes My Man, is pretty much one of their sort of, you know, charting sort of tracks. Uh, and I think there was another one, Debaser. I did hear that on college radio. I mean, a lot of hits, if you could call them, came out of this album. So... Uh, I do think this is a better album overall than Surfer Rosa, but Where Is My Mind is probably their best track in my opinion. Uh, but again, it's not really what I listen to these days. I'm not going to get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to keep them, but it's kind of, you know, it's garage rock really. It's kind of got a rawness and it's raucous and it's uh, it, it sort of speaks to the time. And I have no great nostalgia for that time, to be honest. I sort of moved on pretty quickly from that whole kind of alt scene uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, and when grunge rolled around. And I'm, I guess that, you know, the Pixies would have influenced um, Nirvana and, and the grunge scene or movement, whatever it was. But again, like I was saying, it's got a kind of a slacker feel about it, you know, a kind of middle finger to the world, and I mean, that that was coming off the back of um, neoliberalism of uh, the 80s, 70s and 80s, so yeah, it was probably the, the Gen X kind of sensibility is captured in a lot of these albums, these 90s albums, uh, and a bit of kind of F you to the baby boomers and what they've done to the world and what they've continued to do, and uh, yeah, so you know, it has its place, but it sort of, it captures that kind of attitude, and then I don't really have that attitude anymore, not that I've, not that neoliberalism has won me over, and I'm trying to pronounce that, it's not that easy to say, not that, you know, libertarianism and the whole, you know, me, me, me sort of movement that came out of the 80s, and that was sort of a counter to that, 
not that I'm uh, embracing that now, but at the same time, I just, you know, I'm cautious of that cynicism of this kind of music, of the Pixies music, which, you know, it was there, it was sort of like captured, it was, it was grim, it was sort of angsty, angry. Uh, nothing wrong with that, though. It has a time and place, and I think for young people, and it is, it's sort of the music that as a young person you engage with because it speaks to you because of what you're going through. So I think I can see why Nirvana and Pixies and Pavement that I talked about before uh, would capture a new younger audience, especially when you've got people of my generation saying how cool they are. Some, not me, I'm countering that, but just saying, oh yeah, these... It's our, those were our Beatles or those were our sort of Rolling Stones, uh, those bands that were sort of counterculture. Speaking of counterculture, I don't have any Jane's Addiction, but I do have one Porno for Pyro's album. Um, and Good God's Urge is quite a pretty album for Perry Farrell and the crew. Uh, he did get in a few people. I'm going to try, mm, I don't want to try and read them off the back. And I'm not opening up things and trying to educate you on these albums so much as present them to you. I really like this one. It has got a South Pacific feel about it. Uh, there is a track called Tahitian Moon, uh, but I just think the sensibility of it is very uh, warm and summery. It didn't get great reviews when it first came out. It was second. They came out with a self-titled Porno for Pyros uh, album, which had this track, um, Pets. I think the refrain is will make great pets and that was sort of like a hit song for them. This one I'm not sure if any hits came out of it uh, but overall I find this album really pleasing and fun to listen to. So you know it's a summer track from Porno for Pyros and of course Jane's Addiction they're another one of those bands from the 90s that people are really into and you know those cool 90s bands that I guess could easily get a bit of a comeback uh, if they start releasing things on vinyl as they seem to be wanting to do um, or re-releasing you know anniversary editions things like that uh, I mean a lot of these albums came out on vinyl I bought them on CD I don't need to talk about that anymore I just prefer CD finally in the P's I'm gonna bring up the postal service now this is a little bit more recent if I can see a date on the back I'll say oh yeah 2003 not recent anymore but you know we're not talking about the 90s anymore um, we're talking about just amazing alternative indie music that came out in the early 2000s just captured that generation I don't know what they are Gen Y Gen Z Gen whatever you know uh, younger people than me really got into this album and I can see why and I really love it. It's like the whole album is amazing. Uh, it's the only Postal Service album I've got, but it is worth having. Even though I haven't got three of them, this is one on a must-have list. So go and check them out because this Give Up, it's called Give Up. In case you didn't read that, it can be quite tricky. Uh, but Give Up is an amazing album. And I guess that's a, you know, a generation's voice captured by the postal service and often that's what alternative india is sort of a counter to the pop the pop culture world pop music is trying to just put a nice shiny sheen on everything even though pop musicians may want to kind of talk about things that are important to them they may want to sing about you know breakups and lost loves and things like that that happens in pop songs uh, but they're not really trying to be terribly political Although that sort of changed over time. I did watch a Taylor Swift documentary and I was interested to see that she did get political uh, and probably alienated some fans because of that. Because the pop industry is all about trying to capture, it's in the name, being as popular as possible, capture as many people as possible. Whereas alternative indie music is just putting it out there. I'm not saying they don't want to make money and I'm certainly into supporting them by buying um, the physical product and then going and seeing them, they make more money off touring, of course. Uh, but they're not really in it purely for the big hits. Whereas, you know, the pop industry, pop music industry, it's a hit making industry. That's what they're looking to do. And they're looking to hook you in. Whereas I like a lot of alt indie music because it feels more authentic. And I mean, I know that that's going to be um, tough for some people to swallow when they prefer pop music over alt indie 
and there's reasons for that, and I understand that. I was going to maybe do a video at some point where I talk about pop music, is it bad music, versus other kinds of music, you know, because I'm not into top 40, and I'm not into popular music, really. I have got a pop rock punk collection. It's funny that punk sort of is in there with pop rock. Um, I don't know why I've kind of put them into interlace them with pop rock because punk certainly is its own thing but anyway we'll get to that eventually and you'll see what I have in my pop rock collection that I would deem as not alternative but at the same time it's not full of bands that you may think you know are the best bands like ABBA or Queen um, I just I can't stand <laughs> that's <laughs> controversial I shouldn't say I can't stand them, I respect them, I just couldn't be bothered buying them because I don't want to listen to them. I can hear ABBA any other day, you know, through soundtracks and stuff like that. Uh, I, yeah, I don't go out of my way to listen to pop music, let's just put it that way. Uh, let's see if that's controversial. Whoever's watching this and sees that and go, I love ABBA. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with them, they're not terrible, but they're just, you know, they're ABBA. I mean, you know, you either love them or... Eh, not hate them, but not interested in them. Anyway, I digress. Let's move on to the R's, and then we'll talk about a couple of bands that I want to focus in on. So thanks for watching again, and please come back. Subscribe if you haven't already. That does help. It keeps me going, keeps me motivated. I'm really enjoying seeing what I've got in my collection. I'm playing things as I go. It's helping me to catch up with things, and I hope I'm sharing whole albums with you that you may not know about and uh, would investigate and see for yourself if you want to add them to a physical CD collection. So thanks again and see you soon.